Scriven, and I'm a co-artistic um, director of Dragon Breath Theatre Company. This is Peter Rumney, who's also uh, the artistic director. And this is John Britton. Uh, we've been working at Papawick Pumping Station, and this is John Britton, who's chair of the trust, and you can say a little bit more, John. We were going to be... Uh, we were going to be presenting with Ashley Smart, who's the director of the museum, and he's actually in the film and it was in the performances, um, but he couldn't make it today because of bereavement, but John has come to share his knowledge and be part of the presentation. And, I <laughs> yes, <laughs> this is Jerry and this is Sharon, um, and they were volunteers in the project, you'll see them talking, mm -hmm. and I think you run the Volunteers Association as well, don't you? Yeah, very heavily, and uh, they're with us today as well, so that's wonderful. Thank you, Nettie. Good afternoon. As you've heard, I'm <coughs> John Britton. I'm uh, here in praise of Ashley Smart, who is the museum director at Papworth Pumping Station. You've had a preview, and the, uh, the boilers are behind me. I am chairman of the Papworth Pumping Station Trust. The uh, where a crack in time, the, the film, the, the, the performance was performed last summer by Dragon Breath Theatre. My role is to give a brief introduction and tell you what Papua Pumping Station is about. It was built in the early 1880s to supply fresh, clean water to the homes and factories of Nottingham and the surrounding area. The population of Nottingham had grown rapidly, but unfortunately the urban facilities had not kept up. Um, polluted water supplies had recently been identified as a source of cholera and typhoid to cause a, an unacceptably high death rate. A start had been made in Nottingham to replace the polluted wells and rivers as sources of water. It was decided that the existing water supplies were insufficient and Papawick pumping station was it was agreed that it should be constructed seven miles north of Nottingham to pump water from wells dug into the Bunter sandstone rock which underlies the area north of Nottingham. Papplewick was the latest and most successful of several steam powered pumping stations and was preceded by the building of a spectacular reservoir on an elevated site behind the pumping station. The reservoir had been started in 1879. The pumping station was completed <coughs> in 1884. The pumps attached to each of the two James Watt steam beam engines raised water 200 feet up the manually excavated shafts and sent this water up the hill to the reservoir. From there, the houses and factories of Nottingham were supplied with clean, safe water by pipe was a, a, very much a change in circumstances. The station had a capacity of pumping one and a half million gallons of water a day and continued to supply Nottingham by steam engine power until 1969 when the steam engines were replaced by electric, electric motors but still pumping water out of the same wells as they do today. That was a total of 85 years of continual duty by the two steam engines. The Victorian machinery was of no further use, but a small group of visionaries formed Papawick Pumping Station Trust in 1972 to ensure the permanent preservation of this historic site for the benefit of the public. The Trust is a charity, dependent solely upon the income that can be generated from the site. The site is ACE accredited museum, a scheduled monument, and regarded by English heritage, now historic England, as a site of clear national importance. The Trust seeks to promote the permanent preservation of Papawick Pumping Station, ably assisted by an experienced group of volunteers, and we have two examples on the front row. We are open to the public each Sunday, with eight steaming weekends a year, and we also welcome uh, about 6,500 visitors annually, as well as hosting visits from schools and universities. We also hold events such as Experience Steam with the opportunity <coughs> to learn to drive the magnificent steam beam engine, 
and experience stoking and operating the original boilers to manage steam generation. A visit to the underground reservoir is a special experience. We hope to see you there sometime. We are committed through the Get Wet project with the University of Nottingham to teach children the vital importance of clean water historically, internationally and from a conservation perspective. For many it is the first time that they have really considered the implications of not having clean, fresh water coming out of the tap in their house. For others, understanding the pre-computer Victorian engineering is a dramatic experience. We were delighted when plans came to fruition last year, after four years' hard work by Dragon's Breath Theatre to produce live theatrical performance to schools and family audiences at the pumping station. The rapt attention of all of the children and the many quotes from children, parents and teachers all confirm how well the whole story of Papelwick was brought to life together with the vital and continuing worldwide importance of running clean water. We are most grateful to Peter Rumney and Nettie Scriven. Dragon Breath Theatre were a pleasure to work with and produced exciting, enthralling and meaningful productions on every one of the 20 performances. I will now pass you over to Peter to tell you about that and the cracking time in particular. Peter. Thank you, John. And can I just say, it's a fantastic venue for a wedding. <laughs> Our son got married there this summer. We had a fantastic time. So do spread the word. It's a wonderful wedding venue. OK, so we want to start off very briefly by, just make sure I can see everybody, um, very briefly, just um, explain where Nettie and I are coming from as artists and academics in order to um, contextualise what we feel we brought to Papwick and potentially to other museum and heritage sites as theatre makers. So Dragobred Theatre essentially creates theatre with and for young people. Um, we help, we hope, young people to make sense of the world that they live in through theatre. We do this through epic, often large scale theatre and spectacle. <coughs> Dragon Breath the Play, which was uh, post 9 11, looked at anger, working with children with emotional and behavioural difficulties to develop the piece. Icarus Project, which explored stem cell technology issues, moral and ethical issues for teenagers. Cosmos, the title slipped off the slide. Cosmos, which looked at the nature of the whole universe for four to six year olds. <laughs> Gulliver's Travels, which um, stood in its own right, but was also very much part of a transition project between primary and secondary schools with a large, large liquor. Cracking Time, which of course is the focus of today. And currently we're working at Bulletin Hall where we're redesigning and reinterpreting one of the key rooms through the eyes of, of the 17-year-old Cassandra who arrived to take over and run the house and preserve the family history in 1686. And we're exploring that um, in order to make the room and therefore Bulletin Hall more accessible to family audiences. So that's, that's the work that brings us to this point with a crack in time. We wanted to apply the immersive principles of performance to the museum sector. What do I mean by immersive? Well, it's breaking down the, the boundaries between the audience and the performer, the audience and the environment they're in. It's tactile, it's sensual, it's all-embracing. It's about participatory experiences. <coughs> so for example, in Cosmos, we created an immersive performance which explores complex ideas researched with very young people to feed back their experiences through theatre and in order to echo their, what we call, authentic voices. That's not one of the young people. <laughs> we use narrative. Empathy. Participation, K 
kinesthetic experiences. This young boy is experiencing the concept of gravity <laughs> held by a student performer. It's also about the emotions of that event, making this experience memorable as well as uh, incisive. Using design, multimedia, dance, to create the stories that reflect the lives and experiences of the audience. In spaces where that audience can share their stories with adults who will listen and respond within the structure of the event to whatever the child says or does, asks to the adult, in or out of character. She's looking at herself up, blue screen technology, at herself in the universe above her. Okay, so, Papawick. We've worked at Papawick from 2011 onwards. It started with the University of Nottingham Centre for Advanced Studies Get Wet project, which Nettie is going to talk to you about. I'm just going to get, do you want me to get it up online? Or yeah, you yes. can get, this is the Get Wet website uh, that the University of Nottingham has, has, uh, has set up. Um, but I'm just going to tell you a little bit about the project because although it took us four years to get to performing a piece of Papawick, it did begin with a two year action research project between uh, Papawick Pumping Station Trust, um, the education academics at uh, the university, a team of five artists, we were part of that team, other visual artists, a filmmaker, and very close partnerships with two primary schools and three secondary schools to explore effectively the aim was to help young people in schools think about the, Im the importance of water to life using Papawick pumping station, its history and its leg legacy as a <coughs> stimulation for learning. So working across those disciplines, which really were science, maths, geography, history, um, the artists and the teachers explored and developed an innovative, creative water literacies project that was based around schools owning that project but using Papawick as a stimulus. The Get Wet site documents that. The learning is all documented through films across different schools and is also a resource for teachers now who are, who are interested in water education. Um, that two-year project identified, I mean, it identified many, many things, the, the power of creativity to engage <coughs> and for all young people to learn, but it also identified the power of drama through the research, which took us into the next stage, which was us as Dragon by Theatre um, developing a performance programme at Papawick. So we didn't just go to Papawick and decide to develop it, it emerged out of this action research project we were doing, and Peter will tell you a little bit more now about, there was another step before we even got to performance, which was a research and development around performance, which Peter will talk to. Um, and effectively, we devised it all in a couple of weeks with the artists we'd been working with on the research project. And we realized what a wealth of experience we'd gained from those two years, particularly also working with the academics who were, I would say, radical, challenging, uh, pushy, amazing, innovative, they were brilliant and really that pushed our thinking so at the heart of what we were doing was a very important learning and sharing of discipline. Um, but I'll hand over to Peter to talk about the R&D. Okay, so we developed the action research, as Nettie said, with the same group of artists uh, into a scratch performance in a week and that turned out to be quite sophisticated in the end with three schools from across the region. We explored how we might use drama, characters, and their narratives within the environment to engage young people with the history of the place through empathy. 
we explored how hands-on activities growing out of the drama could convey the complex engineering, geographical, and social ideas that Papawik as a site has to offer every single visitor. And we, were, we invited the children to become what we call performance researchers. They considered the importance of water conservation and management in the past and now in the present. That's absolutely key for us. In order to feed back to us as a team what they thought about performance and how we could improve it. That's absolutely core to our, how we work. So for example, quite rightly they say to us we want more female characters. For example, we want to know more about the actual engineering. So we took all that on board from visits into schools to find out what they thought on reflecting on the R&D pilot project. So that brings us now to the film. Um, the big project was funded by ACE, HLF, Garfield Weston and EMMDF, supported by both the Nottingham University's Spark Children's Festival and Lakeside Arts Centre. It's about 20 minutes long. So sit back and hopefully enjoy. Oh okay, yeah, Blu-ray. people talking to you, stuff is going to happen. It makes me feel like I went straight back to the Victorian times. So the steam moves the beam which pumps the water. You tell me when They you get the child to engage in learning outside the classroom, which in itself is a really exciting opportunity for them to be somebody that they aren't in the classroom. 
project like this where you get the children out of school into this kind of environment that they see this world um, these buildings um, this architecture the reservoir i think it's it's, it's fantastic and i wish every school could bring the children here let your eyes adjust to this space let your ears adjust to this space when we went down into that space and the echoes and the you know the way it was set up and the light projection and everything was just so that was awe and wonder right there you know there was not one child that wasn't completely bowled over so sometimes we'd have little conversations with individual children or small groups of children that felt like they had some real kind of gravitas and depth to them and it really tapped into children's own experiences and for me that was a really powerful point to see young people truly learning, truly gaining experience and imparting their knowledge back. This little boy was trying to talk to me and saying, um, where did you get clean water now? And I was just we talk on the way back. And I walked with him from the reservoir back to the main side. And uh, on the way he told me that he had lived in Africa and had been a water gatherer himself. And uh, so had his brother, and they just moved two years ago to Nottingham. He, he was a very gently spoken little boy. Anyway, the teacher said to me, none of us knew this, you know. They remember that learning because they really engaged emotionally. The interconnectedness of the, of the whole thing, be it history, science, um, environmental uh, awareness, all those sort of things come together. I see, can you see what's coming I out? I um, doing all the washing on especially with the money, because I like to um, turn the wheel. Well, I thought the most memorable thing was probably the music, because it has like a jolly beat, and it makes me remember it. And I keep singing the songs in my head. I like the underground part, because like, it was a bit mysterious and spooky. This is going to make me change my views because sometimes I leave my tap drum there and now I'm going to make it stop the computer. Seeing the reservoir, because I've never seen the reservoir before and it was it was nice to experience what he looks like. I learned how like basically like a Victorian woman's life is because you have to do the wash and work for like quite a lot every day and it's very hard because it like aches your hand like pulling up the plunge. I discovered that water is a huge meaning to life and everybody will need it. It's a long walk to water. It's a long she is a storyteller, a water activist from Bolivia. And that was crucial that she was at the heart of the story. Water! Guiding the story. And through a Victorian story, was telling the children about her world, the world where water needs to be managed really carefully. We should care. We shouldn't like do more things that are just for yourself and being selfish. It's like do it generously. So the water guardian, um, also named Maya, took us into the past to have a feeling of what's happening in the past so we can know what a blessing we have because we have tap swelling. I've taught children from 3 to 11 years old and sometimes we really worry about the disengagement of our young people and I've had nobody not been really eager to get their hands on that mangle handle. So I think in terms of education there's a real lesson about learning by doing, by being hands on, by being kinesthetic. Rarely have I seen a group of children actually engage so uh, completely with 
uh, a place as they have done here. You know, you're learning about the history of both water and about Nottingham, a lot about local history as well. And indeed the, the dramatic story that was played out throughout the day was part of a uh, uh, was a part of that and, and encouraged them, brought out of them um, their own reactions to the place and engaged them with the place in a way that's actually very difficult to achieve. Water falling, water falling, tumbling down. Water. In terms of keeping Pepperwick going and other historic sites like this, it enables them to become alive and that kind of living history is going to give a legacy to Pepperwick itself, but also I would hope to other sites across Nottinghamshire. It looks to me as though this is this project is a uh, uh, Pappy reaching out to um, embrace other audiences through presenting itself in a, a rather different way from the way I guess it normally presents itself. Would anybody like to share what they think? What they think? Yes. Yeah. It is seen as a as an educational resource again. It's a, it's theatre and education at its best, I think. I think it's unusual to work on such a big scale across two sites and lots of places within those sites. So it's technically very demanding, logistically very demanding. It's unusual to ask invite children not just to visit a museum or a heritage site, but to believe they stepped into the past and are living breathing, walking, listening, looking there now. And I think also what's unusual is the fact that underneath and behind the performance, which takes five hours each day, is a huge education program. Why don't you come over here with me? To explore other sides of their personalities, to discover new skills, and to have completely new experiences, often that children don't have. So there are two things that they're engaging with. History, and if you like, the politics and management of water now. You just listen. Like this, uh, 
the most important thing we do in school for making that learning real and purposeful and stick. And I'm so, 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 so pleased that we came today because it will stay with these kids for the rest of their lives, I'm sure. When you do something that's interactive like this, um, it's a way of learning and they didn't even know they were learning. And utterly, utterly different from walking to a museum, picking up a leaflet and reading about it. They're experiencing, they're immersed in it, their emotions are engaged, the sound, all their senses are engaged in that reservoir and they come out. Uh, they may say, oh, it's eerie or it's creepy or it's scary, but actually what they're trying to find the words to say is it's extraordinary, it's mystical, it's, it's unnerving, it's unsettling. And because of that, they'll remember it and really, really think about the purpose of us being there, which is A, to understand these sites exist, precious as this one is, and also what these sites ask us about how we deal with water now. What did you think of the reservoir? Did you like going down there? Dark, creepy, scary, awesome. You said awesome. What I've loved is watching the actors accept verbatim the words that the children have used and not rephrasing them, never telling them they're wrong, never saying no, valuing everything that they've said. So whatever they offer is taken and used and valued um, and that surely can only be a, you know, a good thing and also a really empowering experience I would imagine. This project came from uh, four years work and it isn't about the performance that we put on at the end of it, it is about bringing young people who don't normally have access to cultural sites like this, bringing young people into, into Papawik for their learning and for their whole cultural education and experience. These processes are very extensive and have the children absolutely at the heart. At the heart of it is a guiding of the young people to where you want them to be and who you want them to be with so that they are curious and want to know more and feel vocal. They are having a whole different experience, which is educational, which is holistic, it's kinesthetic, it's multimodal, it's sensual, and that's why moving is so important through the spaces. Thank you for joining us on the journey. Thank you for bringing Papawit to life and helping us to tell the story. Three cheers for the people of Mella and the people of Papawit. Hip hip! Well, young people are our future, and they can't build the future without a working knowledge of the past. We're not looking for answers ever. We're looking for more questions. It's too far more than I ever imagined it would do. It has made four years development with a lot of artists and technical people and historians and academics and teachers and children all working together to bring it to this moment. It's been completely amazing. It's wonderful. It's wonderful. And it's great to see the children enjoying themselves. You know, I'm, I'm passionate about this place and anything I can do to enthuse other people, that's gold as far as I'm concerned. And of course it shows children uh, there's more to water than just turning the tap. In fact, I think a lot of adults would be well to come down and see something like this. So we're hoping that you'll have some observations, questions, challenges as well shortly, but let's just deal with the academic data, shall we, as briefly as possible. What were the project aims? They were to increase the numbers of young people visiting Papwick from across the region through a programme targeted both at schools and family audiences. 
We wanted to find ways to interpret sight in a more interesting and accessible way through the performance and interpretation program supported by workshops in schools and online resources. We wanted to invite children aged 12, uh, aged 12 and upwards to gain a new understanding of their local <coughs> industrial water social heritage and enable them by extension to consider the urgent contemporary global issue of water management and conservation. We wanted to engage volunteers directly with the professional interpretation team in order to increase sustainability, which is the question we hope to put to you to discuss at the end. Was it successful? Well, I've underlined the key points. It increased the museum's public profile with a much younger audience, and it set up opportunities for further development of those audiences in the future. Most of the schools stated that Patwick visit was the best educational visit they'd ever brought children on in terms of the beauty and the heritage of the site and the way it was interpreted by the team in an educational context. Really important. The project engaged children from a wide demographic range. It successfully targeted a high proportion of young people who had never visited a heritage or museum such as Patwick before. And the crack in time represented a significant and unusual cultural experience for these audiences in particular. Um, the written feedback from over 400 children and the in-depth oral evaluations with 50 children from six schools indicated that the day-long event, the subsequent workshops in schools and the bespoke online resources were all effective in bringing Victorian Patwick to life and in raising those important questions about water management around the world, which is the purpose of Papawick's Water Education Trust. They were amazed and inspired. They learned in depth why Papawick was built, how the engineering works or worked, how the site was run in the 19th century, who lived there and how, and they discovered through their engagement with actors and interpreters how the community lived and worked at Papawick in the past, including at some point uh, having the opportunity to talk to people who lived on site as children. A very high percentage would want to return in the future, and they thought it was good value. Why was it successful, perhaps more importantly? So our evaluation identified that all children and adults were engaged in many ways during the experience. A dramatic narrative that the children were engaged, uh, able to engage with characters through empathy and allow them to ask questions and share their own experiences with them. Through an immersive experience, we, to quote Ashley, the director, curated the world that they'd stepped into. So they really had, did believe they stepped into Victorian times. One said, I said, are you all right? It's a bit spooky. I've never been in the Victorian times before. And she had completely accepted in her modern day school that she was in the Victorian times, in that, in that fiction there. It was successful educationally because, as well as understanding about the past, its science, geographical and social history, they were constantly invited to think about the present as well and how the site and its issue impacts on their lives and the lives of others today, not just in Nottingham, not just in Britain, but across the world, globally. Seeing, doing, listening, handling, singing, interrogating, reflecting with the actor interpreters on their experiences as they moved through the site during the course of the day enabled, gave them a sense of empowerment in their learning experience. They were followed up with workshops, and we found that the work was most successful when schools have managed to embed both the visit and the work around it in their curriculum, or integrate it in a thematic way. That's where it worked best. Okay, so finally, what did the children think directly? As I say, we spoke to 50 in a detailed way, and we asked them from 10 out of 10 to 0 <coughs> out of 10, what they, what they what they'd learn from different aspects, singing, watching films, talking to the characters, walking, being silent, reflecting, writing, drawing, etc. I've just selected four. So you can see that 25 out of 50 children said they gave 10 out of 10 for what they'd learned from engagement with characters. And it's grouped a lot at the top end. So we know from the statistics and what they said themselves that working with the characters was profoundly helpful in their learning. Pretty similar for seeing things and doing things kinesthetically. I've just extracted four, there's about 25 or 30 different examples. Interestingly, in this digital age, they were quite ambivalent across the board about what they'd learnt from watching films. Now, 
That might, of course, be due to lots of factors, including the difficulty of projecting films in a deep underground damp reservoir. So, in an arch? It, uh, in three arches as a triptych. I mean, it was a nightmare as a production management thing, but uh, I think you know, their the response to film still stands. And then finally, what, well, this surprised us, but should it? Again, so many of them thought that singing was a fantastic way to learn. We walked into the school four days later, and they greeted us for singing the songs we'd sung to them, or with them, three days earlier. So singing, retention of learning through memory. Very finally, some um, really profound things that they said. These are children, age between eight and 10. It was very interesting and emotionally and deeply explained. I learned how water was delivered to Nottingham. They answered all your questions, but gave you questions to think about. In small groups, you found out the answer. The films and singing were really good. They gave you a feel for what they did, other than they're just talking about it. When they sang, it lifted the scene, even if it was a sad scene. We didn't hold back for emotion or difficult issues to do with ty typhoid, for example, cholera. They made it more fun. They entertain us and give us a tour. With no actors, you'd be, uh, you'd be staring at random stuff, and it would be boring. It's a very important place. If we didn't have it, the poor people would die. Back in Victorian times, the building was very important. Their inventions are very eye-catching. It was a good system. I like the reservoir. How interesting and strange it was. And when Mr. Hawksley stood up for what he believed in, for Nottingham to have clean water and enough, enough dying, meaning there's enough dying. <laughs> yeah. Maybe my forms that day wasn't a good um, Anyway, because he promised Jenny, who lost her children because of the Higgler, who gave dirty water out, and he succeeded. And I've discovered that water is a huge meaning to life and everybody will need it. Finally, these are the resources. Uh, oh, well, shall I go online? No. Yeah. no. So we've got a whole range of, um, of online resources, developed originally with Get Wet, and then we developed them for the production. And we also gave the children a map at the end of the day, so they didn't fiddle with it for six hours during performance. That's why we're going to give you the map at the end of this hour, um, which helps them remember the experience and the teachers are able to use, talk about the characters and their journey through the space. So we were constantly trying to layer and uh, like ripples in a pond. Okay, Nettie, do you want to finish off with a key recommendation? Okay. We'll take it up with yeah, questions. Yeah, just quickly, because we've got time for questions. Yeah. Um, key recommendations that the responses of all the audience and participants in the project indicate that an, that an, an immersive character and narrative-based interactive experience is a powerful way to engage all audiences with Papawick. And that this model needs to be advocated across the museum sector. Um, now this approach to mu museum interpretation anywhere has implications for Papawick and its funding of future education work managing it and also for the support and management of volunteers who may be involved in this interpretation process is that it? and actually what has been coming out in oh, oh sorry well, i'll just say yeah. it, you know what was coming up this morning was about funding this has been cut that's been cut that's no longer there it's like we know that's a, we know that's the context uh, but we, we've got to we've got to find ways to sustain this um so just to finish on one of our volunteers, her quotes, uh, she, she now works at the Galleries of Justice in the museum education sector. I think in terms of our country's living history, it's crucial that we keep these sites going. It's essential that we bring them alive as often as we can with, with the characters that have been created in this production. And it allows children to engage much more freely and imaginatively with such a venue which offers such wide opportunities for learning. So I think certainly for Papawick, it's really exciting to see the potential here and hopefully continue it on their visitor days in the future. Okay, I think we've got through our presentation. Um, so, yeah. other questions? Yeah. We have, uh, just to say, we've got Jerry and Sharon and John also, David Stocker, you saw in the film. Great that you're here today. You might be able to respond to questions as well. Yes. Yes. Yeah, well, thanks very much for that. It's very impressive. Um, I'm just wondering, in terms of the process of putting it together, what did you initially entertain the possibility of doing that eventually you decided not to do? What did you knock out of the process? 
Um, almost. That's a good, that's a good question. Um, well, we're a bit stubborn. So um, we didn't know whether we could get up to that underground reservoir. The logistics are really, I don't know if anybody knows the underground reservoir. It's an amazing place. We actually, well, we achieved it. I can't, I can't really think of anything in the, in, the, in the main project that we didn't. But there were things that you found along the way. Yes. Um, I, I tell you what was one of the. Uh, oh no, we didn't. Uh, it doesn't quite answer your question, but one of the things that I wanted more of was. Um, and we had fantastic uh, teacher um, sessions beforehand to talk about, you know, three months beforehand. I think what I was slightly disappointed occasionally, not big, but a little bit, is that sometimes I would go into schools afterwards and actually they had not embedded it in their curriculum. It was like, oh, this is a one-off thing. You know, we're doing something else. It's like, oh, oh, oh. So, now that doesn't quite answer your question, but, so we didn't leave anything out, but I wanted to have put more of that in. We needed, we actually only had a nine-month run-in time to do it, actually, partly to do with the funding. But um, I think we have to have a year because then, because schools build their curriculums at the beginning, at the end of the summer for the next year or even in the autumn. And actually we needed, you know, if we're developing this further, we need them to look at this, look at the whole rich experience they've got to use and a year down the line go, right, we'll definitely embed it into our spring programme. So it might not answer your question, but it hopefully answers something. I think I can answer the question in reflection, reflection being the key word. In the pilot project, with 30 children a day, we were able to stop and pause and ask them to be silent and to think and to draw and to write and to talk. With 60 children a day, with m so creating more spaces to accommodate them and much more like Les Miserables en coal, I'd say, or ice, uh, one of the things that we sacrificed was some of the time to stop and be still. Now, there was a lot of reflection, as you could tell from the feedback, but that was, I think, the one thing that we, we uh, grieved over slightly. Yeah. Yes? <coughs> yeah, I thought it was an excellent project, very interesting to hear about. I suppose I, there are a million reasons why you might have made the film that you made, and that's, that's fine, but what sits uneasily with me, though, is the amount of people making claims for what the children do and what they are, uh -huh. and that you don't use the children more in your film. Yeah. And actually, even in relation to the downtime and the reflection of the project, going in and shooting them, talking about it, yeah. and picking up that stuff, yeah. and putting that in your film, seems to me to reflect more of the claims for okay. their learning yeah. than the film itself. Yeah. I, I would yeah. agree with that. In the, the, um, the films we made in the pilot project, the children narrated the films. And we structured the, f the, the shots we had around their narration. So I think there was a, a big shift between the two. And I think that's to do with logistics and timing. But I mean, it's, we talked about, we spent months, as you can imagine, working with the filmmakers to make this happen. And it's something we're constantly saying, we need the children more to be speaking. Yeah. And I would agree with you. And it, and it comes across as a nice promotional film yeah. for you. But it doesn't say enough about okay. the model of learning that you set up, I don't think. Okay, that's an interesting that's an interesting comment actually. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, because we can compare it to what we had before, which was all and about said, what the kids the said. Have you got any or, you know any of the stuff that they say afterwards in what you, re yeah. what you yeah, yeah. reported to us? Mm -hmm. We'd all go, wow, that's yeah. brilliant. Yeah. 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 Whereas you've got a lot of people saying, well, you know, intrinsically they do yeah. this and they yeah. learned that, but it'd be nice to hear them say that. Yeah. Yeah. If yeah. only they hadn't said we've got to get them all in the bus now back. To oh, yeah, the yeah, bus yeah. I mean, you understand. <laughs> yeah, I'm saying like, issues. We, yeah. we could, no, we yeah. could, because we could go back in. We could have gone back in. Yeah. It was actually, I think what you say is absolutely pertinent. It was also such a huge piece to film yeah. and document because of the process and the layers. And the filmmakers who were also our media artists are really, really experienced uh, creative forum in working with young people. But it just felt like particularly the interactive moments that we had to really trawl <coughs> through the, the rushes to find where those moments are. And I think, I don't, I'm not quite sure why that happened. I think you raise a really important point mm -hmm. about anybody, any of us, communicating our work to different audiences. The film was made for a conference on 50 years of theatre and education. Yeah. It was partly an advocacy tool in that sense and worked very successfully yeah. in that context. If we'd made the film specifically for today, we'd have talked to you guys a lot more, and we would have shown 
different emphasis, but it ha it was very much for that audience. But I, it doesn't. I mean, the, be the beauty yeah. of what you've got is that it's something for all the people who went through it can be reflected upon. Mm. It's not as if you could go and shoot people who've gone through it, having thought about yeah. it since. What have yeah. they retained? You know, have they learned anything? What do you learn from water now? You know, yeah. What you retain there? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. And it's great. I mean, it's, it's a, a great point. project. So it's, it seems to me that it would be just lovely to hear the kids, you know, kind of speak about it in the way that you, that, uh, yeah. as they did. Yeah. 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 yeah good. Yeah. Other thoughts? Yes? Yeah. You, you mentioned something about comments about the gender dynamics and that you altered yes. the number of female characters. I wonder how you dealt with the very different sort of gender structures in Victorian times in constructing your characters and getting children to not, you know, to think about that, those gender roles critically. Shall I say as the Georgia? Well, you'll pick up, sure. Yeah. Um, so speaking as the writer, we had a, a certain group of people to do the R&D. So they, they played the characters. One, uh, women, one of the women was playing the boy, well, who was in the boy, the boy, the boy. So when we, we knew, I mean, Net is a pretty strong feminist. Um, I totally agree. We wanted to, to, to bring women in more. So what we did was we created the character of Mrs. Montague, who was the site supervisor's wife who actually was at the heart of running the community. And but through that character, we were able to open up the fact that it isn't all about male laborers or male engineers. Um, and also we addressed it through our casting policy um, so that the children felt they were in a world where women were taking important proactive roles. So you saw Patricia, our company stage manager. She, she, so she was also a character Therefore, the balance that you might expect from just looking at the recorded history of uh, male Victorians hopefully was redressed, I think, as much as we could. Yeah, I mean, there was a comment on there from a little boy that said, uh, oh, I learnt about women, you know, the labours and the hard work. And I, I think that was one of the things we really wanted to get over, was it wasn't all about just the engineering, but actually that wouldn't have happened if you hadn't had all the women back home doing all the heavy heavy domestic work as well. So that, that arose, that arose. You obviously asked the question, did you feel it, you didn't see it reflected there or? Well, I, I, I partly asked it because industrial archaeology yeah. is a, people who volunteer in those types of yes. museums are often male, and I wondered how you were able to Well, I think because the different characters they met were, um, there was the gardener who was male, there was Hawksley who was male, uh, they met Jenny Sparrow, who, was, uh, who wasn't from there, but she was from Nottingham Town, and she had gone to look there because of her children having died. So they really engaged with her, and then they had Mrs. Montague, who was running the place with her husband. And that was very apparent, we put that, we put that in, that he was like listening to his wife all the time. Um, and who water was guardian. And then the water guardian. The water guardian was key, and she sort of led everybody in, you know, as a contemporary Bolivian character, effectively. So really, we mediated a lot of their interactions with women, as well with these two other industrial characters. So, yeah, I think we, yeah, it was important that we did that. And I think it was about, yeah, writing those roles in, really, to enable that to happen. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's a good point. Yes, great, thank you very much. Um, what about legacy? You said about, the, about funding and everything. So how do you envisage this being, this model yeah. that you've developed, being, you know, obviously you have funding to support it. So are you envisaging it in terms that schools can use the resources online and develop themselves with small theatre groups or with kind of volunteers and, you know, what's the... What's well, the we're just in that process, really, yeah. effectively, um, of identifying strategies. One is to talk more with the volunteers and at the next volunteer association to talk more about whether they want to take it on and how much more confident they might feel about that. That's one aspect. We um, have talked really about finding ways of making this a smaller program. Um, still at the heart of what we've done, but finding some way to make it smaller. Um, so we think 
In terms of being performance, it can never be self-sustaining. It's too expensive. Um, so, but it might, it might be able to attract small amounts of funding than obviously the funding we did do. So that's our next step um, to look for a bid to put in to do that. Um, we think it's really important to pull in some of the key teachers that uh, were involved in this and the ones that saw it, not all of them, those 20, but pull in like six key teachers to talk about how can this be teacher-led? We do, there is a fantastic, well, we say fantastic, there is a very good uh, layered uh, education resources. They've also got the University of Nottingham's Get Wet Stuff. I think if you've been and you've seen what we offered, uh, we want to we want to find out from them how they think they could take their kids to the pumping station, given that it's the performance they loved, and what they could do as a resource that they lead on. Um, the Galleries of Justice, Lisa, who was the volunteer, she's initiated a project at Nottingham University, where at Trent, I mean, uh, where their the students are doing something that we'll see what that's about in February. That helps teachers. And we will also go for another big bid as well. I mean, it's all about money, isn't it? Uh, another big bid to do this again, but maybe that whole sustained uh, thematic curriculum would be key to that. So that's not saying to you, yeah, we just know exactly how to go forward. We, d we don't know, but those are what, th those are what we've identified. I, and it's all, that's about money, apart from maybe the volunteer thing isn't. Um, I mean, we were going to ask but other people. Money, yeah, still well, yeah. Just well, yeah. 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 Input, yeah. 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 Still yeah. Input. Yeah. In, in really important Sorry. input. Yeah. There was one question that we need to start. I think we probably need to start. Okay. Yeah. Hopefully we can talk on. Yeah. <laughs> thank, thank you. you. Yes. Okay. Thank, thank you very much. much.